This is Star Talk. I have a question from Tristan Brooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, some theorize that gravity is a side effect of the multidimensional geometry of space. But I've also heard talk of a graviton particle, which we just talked about. Is it possible it could be both? If not, what is the more likely candidate for explaining gravity, in your opinion? Yeah, I think the the big challenge now, by the way, as I understand what is going on in behind the string theory door, which is occasionally closed, they try to open it and then... If you're not a string theorist, you have no idea what they're doing behind there. Right. You, 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 trust ca- a- you think there's a cat in a box somewhere, <laughs> and that's a whole different experiment. Yeah. But they're smart people, and you, you, know, you give them the room to think. And so... I like that. Give them room to think. Yeah. I like that. Well, because they're not actually very expensive. They, These get, rooms where people think? <laughs> exactly. Rooms rooms are cheap. Your brain you got for free. <laughs> Throwing a pad, a pencil, and, and a laptop and, to and hand anarchy. it to a string theorist and let them go to town. I don't have any problems with that. So it, so in the world of string theory, there, there's, gravity comes out of some of their calculations, as I've come to understand it. Okay. So that's a good thing because we know gravity exists. And as a minimum, you want your theory to explain at least what you already know, but then come up with predictions to then test uh, test it even more deeply. So here's the point. There is no reason to think that gravity does not also have a quantum manifestation of itself because everything else has a quantum manifestation of itself. I have a quantum manifestation Yes, you do, of but myself? it's very averaged out because you're a macroscopic entity. Did you just a... call me average? <laughs> I'm sorry, I misheard you. No, I called you macroscopic, a macroscopic entity. All right. That, that was the name calling that I engaged in. So I'm not sure how to respond to that. Uh, and we know from small, uh, the, how matter, matter, matter manifests in small, in small sizes that it, it can reveal itself as a wave, as a particle, depending on how you measure it and on the circumstances under which you conduct the experiment. So it's, not, it's a very human thing to say, is it this or is it that? Is it a planet? Is it not a planet? Is it is it less filling or is it great taste? Is it is it gum or is it candy? These are sort of false dichotomies. Something can be both, but our language forces it us forces us to require mm. that it fit into one word or another. Okay. It what we're not recognizing is that it's not a fault of the object or the concept. It's a defect in our language. And if our thoughts follow language, we have trouble thinking of things that fit more than one category. We do. I think that's the source of most human ailments yes, in the world. Yes, it is. Cultural ailments. Are you gay or are you not gay? Right. Are you black or are you not? Are you this? Or are you that? Are you male? Are, or are, are you female? female? Are you? And it's like chill out. Just let it. Be, let you know. Just let things be what they are. Allow there to be a spectrum in all that you see. So does that? That doesn't necessarily just mean a broadening of language, but a broadening of the the way the human mind thinks. I think that once you learn language, the language shapes how you think more than your thoughts shape what language does. It takes a very creative person to start inventing words for thoughts that they had for which no words applied. There's an age after which your thoughts are- That's the word icky. (laughs) Your thoughts are constructed from the, the vocabulary available to you. And you have to be very creative to have a thought for which there's no vocabulary to account. And when you do, that's how you invent new words. And Shakespeare put tons of words into the English language that, huh. that man had thoughts beyond all. Or it could start with just saying, I don't know how I feel. And then there comes the exploration of finding that word. Yeah, but typically that's not what people do. They find a word that exists. Right. And then they force it into the words that exist, and then that becomes that's true. the manifestation of their thoughts. So, so I think... Most of the world comes in flavors and not just is it A or B or black or white or up or down. And so there's a swirl. Yeah, even gravity <laughs> or quantum physics. Wow. Well, that got way more philosophical it than did, I don't think. But I, I liked okay, it. Okay, sure. I liked it. 